Welcome to my next Lost. Season 2 episode review video. Before I get into that though, pretty important if you aren't caught up to the point where I am at rewatching or watching Lost or you're just not entirely sure, then you definitely need to take the initiative and pay attention to the episode's title, which of course I'll mention as well as put in the description. If that happens to be the case, you find you're not caught up, it would be my recommendation that you don't watch this video any further to avoid any potential spoilers. Now, I've already watched Lost three times. In fact, the last two times I binged it, and I want to take my time with it and let it resonate. Uh, one of my favorite shows of all time, but I'm not the only one that's watching Lost. The legendary Crazy Coffee Man, who you see in my comments section for various videos, such as Lucifer, Breaking Bad, and Dexter, is actually watching Lost for the first time. So join us in the journey, and let's discuss this awesome and amazing show. But no spoilers past this episode, please. With all that said, this will be Lost, Season 2, Episode 13. The title of this episode is called The Long Con. And this will be my review, reaction, recap after just finishing watching the episode about five days ago, actually. I watched this episode on a Friday night, and it is now Wednesday uh, evening. I had to deal with some things and just didn't have time to record. So it's not right after I watched the episode. But we start off with Jack and Locke. Uh, they open the gun vault, and Jack enters, opens up the, the Halliburton case, and removes the guns, along with the weapons and ammunition. The vault also contains the seven Virgin Mary statues that Locke confiscated from Charlie. Locke's left the heroine in the statues because he's too self-admittedly superstitious to break open the seven religious icons. Locke gives Jack the combination to the gun vault and suggests that Jack might consider keeping the medicine in there as well. It seems that Sawyer has returned to his pack rat ways. Sawyer taunts Charlie for getting kicked out of Claire's tent, and Charlie replies that Sawyer should be more concerned with his own tent, which at the moment is being ransacked by Jack. Sawyer walks up for a confrontation as Jack finds a prescription bottle, and Jack accuses Sawyer of stealing the meds from the hatch. Sawyer says he was simply reclaiming stolen property as the meds were in his stash when he left on the raft. The two tow up for a fight, Sawyer threatening Jack, but Jack takes the meds and walks away. Then we have our flashback with Sawyer lying in a hotel bed with beautiful Cassidy, played by Kim Dickens, who is Madison Clark in Fear the Walking Dead. Sawyer attempts to perform the same trick he performed on Jessica, except when the briefcase opens this time, Cassidy doesn't bite. She doesn't believe the coincidence and notices that the money is fake. She... It bugs him him about being it's a clumsy attempt and informs him that she didn't get any money from the divorce Sawyer offers to leave no harm no foul but Cassidy would rather rather he stayed she wants to learn the con back on the island as Sawyer puts his tent back together after Jack's ransacking Kate enters to both tease him and give him a new woman's magazine she's retrieved from the hatch to cheer him up Sawyer isn't really happy about that because he lost his glasses on the raft. He asks Kate if she would read to him. Just as he begins reading out loud from the magazine, John Locke walks by and greets them. This launches a conversation about the recent changes in the group's dynamic, such as Locke instead of Charlie sleeping next to Claire and Jack and Ana Lucia's recent decision to form an army. The last bit is news to Kate, and Sawyer teases her, saying that maybe he isn't the only one on the outs with the doc. Saeed is stabbing coconuts on a stake in the ground. Hurley comes over and makes a lime in the coconut joke, but uh, Saeed isn't in a laughing mood. Now, if Kamala Harris were here, she'd say something about, you see the coconut? Or whatever the hell she said. Anyway, Hurley quickly gets to the point. It seems that Bernard had a shortwave radio with which he could hear Boone's transmission uh, from the, the Beechcraft. And uh, Hurley has brought it to Saeed to see if he could boost the signal. Saeed is dubious about whether it's possible and if it would even be worthwhile. Hurley tells Saeed that 
it was really just a project to cheer him up, and Saeed doesn't need cheering up and leaves the radio behind as he walks away. Ana Lucia and Jack discuss their difficulties recu recruiting for an army. Ana Lucia is under the impression that everyone is too reluctant to fight because they feel too safe, but Jack disagrees. There may be more, or there may be other trust issues involved. Sun is working in her garden and is startled when the in the bushes when uh, she hears them rustle, and then is relieved when Vincent comes running out. She frowns at the sound of uh, distant thunder, but suddenly a bag falls over Sun's head, and she's dragged backward into the bushes. Kate and Sawyer hear her screams through the pounding rain and find her unconscious in the jungle. Kate runs to get Jack while Sawyer carries Sun back to the beach. Jack arrives at her tent seconds before a frantic Jin comes in. Sawyer reports that he found her unconscious in the jungle and her hands were tied. Ana Lucia proclaims that the others are back. John Locke insists that they'd make a they'd made a truce, but Jack thinks they broke their word. Ana Lucia wants to arm up the group and uh, comb through the jungle. Uh, but Locke uh, puts his foot down. He reminds Ana Lucia that uh, it is more dangerous for them to give weapons to untrained people. Jack agrees and says that they should wait for what Sun will say about the attack, and then they are going to plan something. Kate and Sawyer are playing detective. Sawyer points out the the entire situation feels wrong. How did Sun break free from with with her hands bound? and while unconscious, and why are there tracks when the others don't leave any? They find a hood hanging from a branch, but Sawyer points out that it's a different hood than the one used on Kate. It's all in the details, and they're wrong, he says, but who would have motivation to scare 46 people unless they were trying to con them into joining an army? And then we are back to our flashback. Sawyer stands outside a gas station fixing bogus price tags to junk jewelry, while explaining the con once again to Cassidy, who will be acting as a shill. Uh, they'll be looking at the price tags rather than the jewelry and at the the bandage on his nose rather than his face. Soon the con is on. Slayer approaches two men, Arthur and Peter, at the gas station and offers them the necklaces, all priced over $1,000 on the tags at $100 apiece. The men are skeptical, but Cassidy walks up from the other side and buys two without hesitation. This encourages the men, and fools uh, part with their money. So they part with their money, they get the them, which they shouldn't. Who would buy stuff that quickly? You always got to think about it and then research it online. Um, when I was in sales, I used to get so mad that what people would come in and look and then tell me, well, we're just looking. Well, yep, you've looked now. It's time to buy. Oh, you're just going to buy it on Amazon. Anyway, over at the uh, Sun and Jin's tent, Jack is reassuring Jin. Uh, Sun's pulse is strong. She needs to be watched, but he she is going to be fine. Jack steps away to get some water, and Kate is waiting for him. She asks Jack how well he knows Ana Lucia and hints around Sawyer's theory. Jack won't hear it and walks away. Jack strolling down the beach with Ana Lucia. She mentions that people like Steve and are suddenly more willing to join the army, and Jack is forced to face the possibility. He asks her point blank where she was at the time of Sun's attack. Uh, as she questions his motives for asking, Claire runs down the beach to tell Jack that Sun has woken up. Sun awakens to find herself in a double interrogation, one in English from Jack and one in Korean from Jin. She doesn't remember anything, didn't see who did it, and doesn't know how many there were. Jin is satisfied that the others are responsible and demands a gun from Jack. Sawyer and Kate watch the entire exchange from a distance, and Kate realizes that the entire scenario is a setup so Ana Lucia can get her hands on the guns. She begs Sawyer to run ahead of the posse to the hatch and warn Locke that they're coming. Back to our flashback, Cassidy is taking a shower while Sawyer brushes his teeth. She wants to know what their next play is. Sawyer suggests the pigeon drop. Cassidy counters with that they've already done the pigeon drop along with the Tulsa bank scam uh, bank scam, and that the looky Lou, all these weird cons they have names for, she wants to play a big con. Sawyer corrects her, her wordage and explains that a long con is when you convince someone to ask you ask a favor like it was their idea. The problem is that long cons take a lot of startup capital. Cassidy admits that she lied when she told Sawyer she got nothing from the divorce 
and that she actually has six hundred thousand dollars. Sawyer seems reluctant but willing to consider the idea, so Cassidy drags him into the bedroom to sway him. John Locke is searching through the books on the shelf to see if there's anything hidden in them. Sawyer suggests or t- tells him of the approach, approaching mob and suggests that Locke change the combination. Locke is intrigued by the reason behind Sawyer's sudden heads up, and Sawyer tells him that he is doing this because it will piss off Jack. Locke doesn't think that that will stop them. He'd prefer to hide the guns elsewhere, but can't leave the hatch unmanned. Locke pleads, and finally Sawyer agrees to stay in the hatch and push the button for John Locke. And then we have Sawyer sitting at a diner in our flashback and places an order with Diane Jansen, Kate's fa- or Kate's mother, I was going to say father. Uh, he's soon joined by Gordy, played by Kevin Dunn, who asks how the long con on Cassidy is going. Gordy scouted Cassidy out as, the, as a mark and feels that it's time for payday. He says Sawyer is getting too close to the girl and thinks he's falling in love. Sawyer wants to call off the job, but Gordy threatens to kill both Sawyer and Cassidy. Back on the island, Sawyer wakes up as the alarm sounds. Jack and Jen enter and find Sawyer near the computer. Jack asks Sawyer where John Locke is, but Sawyer brushes off his question. Jack opens the gun vault and finds that it is empty. Jack asks Sawyer where the guns are, and Sawyer suggests that he call the police. Sawyer then throws Jack the bottle of meds that started the confrontation, and Jack starts to take the bait, but Jen stops him. Locke sits apprehensively in front of a campfire. Jack approaches and accuses Locke of breaking their agreement. Locke admits that he broke the agreement and gives the reason that there might be another accident. He then tells him he made the, he made the mistake by he made by teaching Michael how to shoot, but Jack isn't inclined to listen. Just as things heat up, three warning shots are fired into the air to everyone's alarm. Sawyer emerges from the shadows with a rifle over his shoulder to Jack and John Locke's surprise. It's now apparent that Sawyer conned both Jack and Locke into giving him the weapons as well as conning Kate. Sawyer then gives the following speech to the entire group. How about you listen up? Because I'm going to only say this once. You took my stuff while I was off trying to get us help, get us rescued. You found my stash and you took it. Divvied it up. My shaving cream, my batteries, even my beer. And then something else happened. You decided these boys here were going to tell you what to do and when to do it. Well, I'm done taking orders. And I don't want my stuff back. Shaving cream don't matter. Batteries don't matter. The only thing that matters now are guns, and if you want one, you're going to have to come to me to get one. There's a new sheriff in town, boys. Y'all better get used to it. Back to our flashback, Cassidy waits at home with a briefcase full of money on the table. Sawyer walks up in, or walks in agitated. He points out a black car across the street and tells Cassidy that his partner, Gordy, is in, is in it waiting for the money. She was the long con all along, and if he doesn't walk out there with the money, Gordy will kill them both. Sawyer takes the money out of the briefcase and puts it into the duffel bag. Sawyer tells her that Gordy is only here because he refused to take her money. Instead, he proposes that she take the money and run to a motel, the Sage Flower Motel off Highway 29 in Sauk City. He'll take care of Gordy, and either way, she'll be safe. Then he hands her a duffel bag and pushes her out the door with proclamations of love. Cassidy then leaves. Sawyer sits on a bench, polishing his rifle. Kate walks up and asks how he accomplished getting the guns from Locke's hiding spot when he was in the hatch pushing the button. But Sawyer isn't talking. Kate now knows that he played her all along and thinks that he had something to do with son's abduction. Uh, setting aside the, the, the how for a moment, uh, Katie, Katie, Kate turns to why. She doesn't believe it's got anything to do with revenge or power. Kate thinks Claire just wants people to hate him, and Sawyer reminds her she runs, she cons. Or I should say, she runs, he cons. Tiger don't change his stripes. Hurley is reading a manuscript called Bad Twin. Saeed walks up with the radio and a pole. Together they tune it past past Daniel's 
transmit transmission and find a clear signal from a classy jazz station. Sai tells Hurley that because signals from that frequency bounce off of the atmosphere, the music could be coming from anywhere. Hurley responds, or any time. Just kidding, dude. Charlie approaches Sawyer. It is revealed that Charlie followed Locke and told Sawyer the gun's hiding place. Sawyer offers Charlie one of the Virgin Mary statues, but Charlie declines. If he wanted one, he'd have taken it himself from Locke's stash before he told Sawyer where it is. Charlie only participated in this con to make John Locke uh, look like uh, and feel like a fool. He also wants to be certain that Sawyer will never tell Son that it was him who attacked her in the jungle, and Sawyer agrees. And then Charlie uh, does have one question. However, what made Sawyer, what made Sawyer plan this out? Sawyer walks out the front door of the flashback of Cassidy's house and sits in the passenger seat of the black car. There's no one else in it. He starts counting Mississippi's. Once he's satisfied that enough time has passed, Sawyer walks back into the house and pulls a second duffel bag out from under the table. This bag actually has the money. On his way out, he notices a picture of Cassidy and himself, and he sets it face down. And then Sawyer tells Charlie, I'm not a good person, Charlie. Never did a good thing in my life. And that's what ends this episode of Lost. So, obviously... Really fun episode for Sawyer. I'm going to give this an 8.6 out of 10. Sawyer is my male character of the episode by far. And the female character of the episode is Cassidy. I actually like Cassidy's character. And special recognition, I think, to Charlie, who is upset with Locke. And he wanted to do this thing to get back at John Locke to make him look like a fool. So you've heard everything that I have to say. Now it's your turn. If you're a fan of Lost and you want to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, please don't forget to Hulk smash the like button. Share the video with a friend. Put this video on any one of your social media platforms. Don't forget to sound off in the comment section about what your thoughts are about this episode of Lost. You'll be interacting with me and the legendary Crazy Coffee Man. What's your score? Whom are your characters of the episode? No spoilers past this episode. And then last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button. You're watching the video anyway. Subscribe to the channel. Join the team. Show your damn support. And be a part of something special. And you never know what you're going to see on JDevTV.